If you are a prospective college student who's getting ready to apply to college in the next couple of years and you're wondering what's going on in the test optional debate, we have some new evidence that has come out, new data, and there was a recent New York Times op-ed about it. I'm gonna talk about it in this video and also what that means for you if you're considering going test optional in the coming years. My name is Brooke. I've been an independent college consultant and test prep tutor for almost two decades. I've helped coach students into schools, Stanford, Harvard, Princeton, Yale. For some reason, I specialize in top colleges. I don't know how I sort of landed there, but those are the kind of uh, schools that I tend to work with students in. And the particular study that I'm going over today focuses on what we call Ivy Plus universities. So if you're looking for help in the college admissions process, be sure to check out supertutortv.com. We have tutoring, essay coaching. I do some consulting. Like I said, I specialize in top 50 colleges. We also have a digital SAT intensive course that is starting on January 31st that you guys can check out. We also have a full scale digital online course, which is basically like if you wanted to buy a bunch of books for the digital SAT, this is a digitally delivered version of that, plus videos of me explaining some of the material to help walk you through it. So if you're looking for awesome online material, definitely go and check that out at supertutortv.com. As always, we have a blog that goes with this video if you'd rather read than watch. So let's talk about this new data. So there was a recent study from an organization called Opportunity Insights out of Harvard, and they were looking at the performance of test optional policies at Ivy Plus universities. So that's all the Ivies plus Stanford, MIT, Duke, and U Chicago. Here's what they found. Number one, at elite colleges, test scores were far more predictive than GPA and were highly predictive of freshman GPA. 0.43 points of your GPA correlated with your SAT or ACT score. So an SAT, a perfect SAT score correlated with 0.43 more points in your GPA than a 1200 on the SAT. And it is true, only 5% or something of students who got into these universities had a score as low as a 1200 to 1400. So there's not a lot of data points in the lower lower ranges, but they found that test scores were the best predictor of freshman performance at Ivy Plus schools. Another really interesting thing that they found, and this to me is probably the most interesting takeaway for my students who are trying to strategize on test optional. They found that students who were test optional and did not submit scores performed about as well as those who submitted scores and were at about a 1307. And a 1307 is below the 25th percentile for sure at all these schools in terms of their median test scores, right? If only 5% of students at Brown, for example, were getting between a 1200 and a 1399 on their SAT, you can tell that this is, used to be an infinitesimal percentage of students that were getting in. And with test optional policies, actually, this is kind of interesting. Let's look at my best bets for test optional. So if you guys haven't seen it, I have a really interesting chart on our best bets for test optional video. If you haven't watched it, you should watch it because it's interesting to see all this data. I'm just doing a little quick case study on Brown. Brown, some of SAT, ACT submissions last year was about 81% from, and I think there was like a student survey that said it was even, that it's a little bit lower than that, but it was like 76% or 75% of students submitted test scores from their student survey. That means 25% of students didn't submit test scores and they were performing at the level that represented 5% of those with test scores, right? My guess is this is going to affect admissions policies given this kind of performance data, which is new. We didn't have the data before. Because colleges were experimenting and some of the results of those experiments are coming back and that's gonna change how colleges use data moving forward. So we'll talk about that in a minute. The second finding was that high school GPA basically was not predictive at these top universities. Now, this being said, I will say in a test optional world, there are probably more variances in test scores among students, I would imagine, than necessarily GPA because of grade inflation, right? Something like 44% of American high school students have an A average or above. But they found that there was only a 0.1 difference in GPA freshman year at these elite colleges between students who had a perfect GPA at their high school or students who had an unweighted 3.2, which is super minimal, 0.1 difference in GPA. It's almost tiny, tiny. So what does this mean? I mean, first of all, with so many students having A averages, if you look at like the common data set, for example, let's look at a common data set. Let's have some fun. So I'm just pulling up a common data set. I pulled up Brown. 
So my problem with this is though I'm sure that there were some students, there's really small sample sizes here. Only 5% of Brown students had a 1,200 to 1,400 SAT score, whereas 95% of them who gave scores had a 1,400 to a 1,600. Okay, so 100% of students at Brown were in the top half of their high school, 97% were in the top quartile, and 93% were in the top 10th. So really small sample size in terms of the number of students who are going to have a 3.2 because Given what I told you that 44% or about half of students have an A average, and what's an A average? That's a maybe unweighted, if all your classes were honors, it would be unweighted 3.5. So more likely, because not all classes are honors, it's like something like a 3.6, right? That half of American students have like a 3.5, 3.6 or above. A 3.2 is going to be in the bottom half. Brown didn't have anybody even in that segment. And so I will admit that there's going to be a small sample size, but in any case... You can look at the line and there is a line. You know, there's fewer data points at the bottom of the line, but there's a correlation. So there you go, that SAT and ACT scores of admitted students are more predictive of success than GPA. Three, third finding, low income students with the same test scores performed about as well as high income students with the same test scores. I know a lot of the narrative likes to say that, oh, test scores are only an indication of wealth, they actually don't indicate that much intelligence. And so when we use test scores, we're really just letting in the rich kids who had lots of prep to fake their smarts, right? Well, the fact that it correlates with GPA kind of discounts that. And the fact that if poor kids can get the same scores as the rich kids, they perform as well in college. And if they get lower scores, they perform about as well as the rich kids with the lower scores kind of blows that out of the water a little bit. Whether you're rich or whether you're poor, if you can get a great score, it potentially can mean something for your academic performance at these schools. So what does that mean if you are a parent or a student looking into the jaws of college admissions at these elite institutions? Number one, it means you better darn well take the SAT and the ACT because not only might we see some schools return to either test required or tests recommended policies where they want to see your test score because suddenly it's correlating much better than GPA with your performance at these schools. You need to be ready for changing policies because given the data, which literally just dropped in January 2024, you need to be ready for it. Likewise, I am saying at this point with my students, if you're applying to Harvard, Stanford, Princeton, Yale, where they're not really playing games, they're always at the top. They're always winning the game, you guys. They can accept somebody with a 1200 SAT and hide it in that bottom quartile anyway. If you're applying there and your test optional, they're probably going to assume you're going to check in, clock in somewhere around a 1307. So if you've got a 1400 or you've got a 1450 and you're like, it's below the 25th percentile at Harvard, I think you're still better submitting because otherwise they're going to look at you and think on average you're probably going to perform as well as people with a 1300. And I would rather submit that 1450 and cross my fingers. Obviously, if your score is not high, your chances of getting in are lower, period. But if you've got something that's um, in between or a 1400 plus, I'm probably gonna say from here out, submit at the very top colleges, at least those four hips, as we like to call it. Number two, don't sweat your GPA, especially if you go to a super competitive school. It looks like GPA doesn't matter that much. So if you got a couple Bs, maybe you just have some mean teachers. Number three, though many colleges will likely continue test optional policies officially, they are likely to admit fewer and fewer candidates without scores given this data that's come out. So I expect an uptick in the consideration of scores and expectation uptick in terms of colleges expecting to see scores. Even if colleges say they're test optional, if you are test optional, your chances of getting in are probably going down given this data drop. I think colleges are going to be looking for scores. Test scores can matter. They are predictive. You might want to get on that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. If you want insider tips on this college admissions process totally for free, you should join our Facebook group, Competitive College Admissions. I answer a boatload of questions on there. So if you want free advice from me, that is the number one place to get it. And sign up on Facebook, Competitive College Admissions. Go look it up. And again, if you want tutoring, consulting, any of that stuff, find us at supertutortv.com. I will see you guys later. Hopefully on our live digital SAT class soon. Ciao for now, everybody.